afternoon history teachers and learners. One of the topics that could be selected as a topic for essays from paper one is the one on black power movement. And I have to say most schools are going for this topic and I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the topic really because this is one of those topics where the marks can easily be collected by learners. Of course, learners who have been taught and learners who have thoroughly prepared for this topic. Uh, I've decided to introduce this topic with giving life to it. That's why I've, I've added a picture of an animal here. And this is not just an animal, but it is a, a panther, and a black panther for that matter. The reason why I've, I've used this is because you are getting two messages. Black, because the movement that we are to, going to talk about is focusing on, on black people or African Americans, as they were also called. Again, this animal, the reason why I used it is if you, you don't, you don't uh, pester with it, there's nothing that's going to happen to you. But once you, you, you interfere with it and then you start rubbing it the wrong way, then problems will befall you. The black, conscious, the, the, the black power movement is, is, is always wrongly associated with violence, as if they were overtly violent, whereas this goes against what they profess themselves, that violence, if necessary, so that's why I've used the animal. And from the eyes, you can see the fierceness. Because you will later see with, from the Black Panther Party and the supporters of the Black Panther Party that they, they were very fierce, especially to people who reacted with violence, like the Triple Ks and the violent police. So this is the reason why I've used this animal. I've also used the two flags to ground this topic. The first one is really to ground the topic, to say this that we are going to be talking about is something that happened in the United States of America regarding or affecting the lives of African Americans who, who were there in America, especially in the South. And then for, for the flag of South Africa that I have attached here is because I, I wanted to remind you that there is direct semblance between the black power movement and a movement that was going to be started by Stephen Bantu Biko in South Africa in the 1970s, which is Black Consciousness Movement. So I'm, I'm in a way conscientizing you of the fact that once you have selected Black Power Movement, it will not make sense for you as a student of history not to choose Black Consciousness Movement, BPM, BCM, because of the interconnectedness that you are going to, to see as we go on. I've, I've started by saying black power movement advocated for both political and cultural revolutions. I'll quickly say what I mean by those. The, the political situation in America was not favoring African Americans. Uh, we saw the situation in, in, in the South when we were doing civil rights movement because that's where the movement was, was, was based. But it was even worse in the North where even though their situation was not as bad as it was with the African Americans in the South, but the, the, the ghettos that they were living in, the, the, the conditions that they were exposed to on a daily basis, even leading to high infant mortality rate, will mean that something had to be done politically so that their political lot is changed. That is why I'm saying the Black Power Movement advocated for revolutions, for radical changes, both in terms of the political setup as well as in terms of culture. Because the Black Power Movement was saying something is wrong with African Americans uh, and the way that they, they regarded themselves in terms of, of culture and in terms of their history. And you'll see that from the teachings of Black Power Movement and organizations associated with Black Power Movement, a lot of focus is going to be placed on enhancing and trying to revive and, 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 and raise cultural loyalty among the African Americans, such that if that is raised, then they know that the revolution will easily be achieved. And I'm sure once I say this, you can easily connect with the black consciousness movement in South Africa after Steve Biko, because this that happened in the 1960s was later to affect what ha will happen in South Africa in the 1970s. This that happened under Malcolm X, Stokely Carmichael, and other leaders was to lead to change in South Africa, and those changes will translate in a movement that will be led by Stephen Biko, among others, in the 1970s in South Africa. That's, that's how I, I decided on this layout. This layout may look silent as you look at it, 
but it really has got a lot of messages uh, regarding the topic that we are going to be doing. I, I've started here by, by showing you the country that we are talking about, uh, which is the United States of America. Of course, at the time, there, was, there were stages where the states here were, were, were unorganized, but uh, you will have the United States of America, which can, for convenience sake, be divided into two. Not that you had North, North United States of America and South United States of America, but for the purposes of our study, capturing the attitude of the white people in America, you can, you can have a clear distinction between the North and the South. That's why this map is attached, because this map will help us understand that uh, the, the white Americans did not respond in a similar way to African Americans. That is, the white Americans in the North and the white Americans in the South. I'm sure your teachers will have taken you through this explanation of how the two regions differed, really, in terms of the, 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 the population, in terms of the numbers of African Americans, where were they mainly found, where were they perceived to be a threat, and then that will take you into a distinction between the North and the South. The other, the other reason why I, I have this map here is because we are talking about the situation in America in the 1950s to the 1970s. Now, the better part of, of, of the first section, the 1950s, will be covering what will be happening in the South of America, and that will be under civil rights movement. And the activities of the civil rights movement will have been focused on the South. Yes, it's fine. We know that the sympathizers from the North, both black and white, will have participated in the activities started by uh, civil rights movement activists, if we can call them that. So this part will have been the part which, if we want to, we can say this is where the civil rights movement activities, that is the South, will be grounded. I'm not going to go into the details really of, 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 of saying how the white people who were here were behaving towards black people, but if you follow the events, especially the Little Rock uh, incident that happened in the state of Arkansas, you will have had the sense of, of how things were. And, and now the focus is going to be on the North, because the North also had its own peculiar problems, where even though African Americans were not as many as they were in the South, but they had problems. And the African Americans here, unlike the ones in the South, are the ones who went to work on, on factories, who stayed in ghettos, who were relatively young, and fewer than the ones we found in the South. So immediately I, I, I mentioned the age that they were young. It will tell you about the vigor and energy that they will have. And I'm sure it immediately says that they won't show the same amount of tolerance as was shown by the African Americans who were found in, in the South. I'm now talking about the African Americans who were found in the North. So this is really the, the reason why I have this map here. Um, the topic that we are going to be looking at is on civil rights movement uh, in America, but now we are looking at this radicalized blend, which is the black power movement. Now, during the civil rights movement, this will be the things that they were fighting for. And if you look at them, these are just basic and mild demands, which were soberly made by, 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 by proponents of civil rights movement. And as you can, look at, as, as you can see from the photo, uh, they were civilized, they, they don't look violent. They were drawn from across r different racial groups. So these are the things that they were demanding. So the, if you like, you can say they were looking for a solution inside. They regarded themselves as America, as Americans, and whatever solution they wanted, they wanted them to be solved within America. That's why they identified themselves with uh, America. Uh, okay, this will be one of the examples through, you know, the march in, in 1950. Uh, 53, where Martin Luther King made that speech, which will be famous, the I Have a Dream speech. Uh, and then, now, the problem is, we are still talking, we are still going to talk about the Black Power Movement. This, these photos are, are, are borrowed from the experiences of the Civil Rights Movement. You will remember that the Civil Rights Movement and their activities, they were peaceful in nature. But this is the kind of response that they made in most cases. And because of this, there was going to be growing despondency, really, among militant African Americans to say, how can we continue to be like this when this is the type of reaction we are, we are, we are, we are, we are getting from, from the authorities, from the police? 
So this is just an example that showed you the brutal that shows you the brutality which will lead to the radicalization of attitude among the the the, the African Americans leading to the growth of black power movement. This is another example of 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 the treatment that innocent and peaceful Africans were met with when they were advocating for their needs. So this will show you that even though the African Americans initially under civil rights movement, they wanted to stay peaceful. But because of reactions like this, of course, the reasons will go beyond this. But this, this was among the main reasons why really the, the, the resolve to always be peaceful will lose support because there will be voices that will say, why stay peaceful when you are met with violence? Why not meet violence with, with violence? Hence, later we are going to move from civil right movement to black power movement. Civil right movement with this a peaceful approach to a more radical strategy used by the black power movement where they were saying violent if necessary. Right, uh, okay. This is, this is an example of the non-racial character of the civil rights movement, which really uh, act the, the, uh, uh, or, or made the people who, who will form the black power movement angry to say, how can you have white people amongst yourselves? How can white people be your oppressors and your liberators at the same time? How can you associate with America, like these flags are showing here, as a country which is not really respecting your rights? That is why as opposed to the civil rights movement, which really was talking for integration, you can see Dr. Martin Luther King here, as opposed to the approach of the civil rights movement that wanted solution inside, that wanted integration, the black power movement will go for something completely radical to say, from 1950 up to 1965, we have been trying and, and, and with peace and with all this, with this um, time consuming strategies, we have been trying to, to knock on the door but is the door being opened? So they are literally saying, because the door is not being opened, let's go to other strategies. Maybe instead of knocking on the door, let's kick the door down. Let's not use peace, let's use violence, because we, we, the, the peaceful efforts that we, are, we have been using from the 1950s up to roughly 1964-65 did not bear any fruits. Then that's why we are going to have the, the, the black power movement. But despite the fact that there's going to be black power movement, I think it will be, it will be foolish of us if we will completely discount the contribution of the black power move, of, of the civil rights movement. Because if it was not for the civil rights movement and their activities, we wouldn't have had the Civil Rights Act of 1964. We wouldn't have had the 1965 Voting Rights Act. There wouldn't have been Fair Housing Act. And all the other civil rights which were, were granted because of those efforts. But the question that we need to ask is, was this enough? Yes, we know that this were achieved, but was this enough? And clearly the answer, according to the, the supporters of Black Power Movement, they say, yes, we acknowledge this, but this did not go far enough. This was not enough. This really did not uh, justify, or this was not in relation to the efforts that the, 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 the African Americans have been taking. That is why for them, there was going to be a need for a change of strategy. Um, and, and clearly, the civil rights movement, which was under the leadership of Dr. Martin Luther King, they had their strategies, but not everyone agreed with the strategy. Because Malcolm X, he became impatient with Dr. King's nonviolent approaches. That is why, sarcastically, in 1953, when Dr. Martin Luther King, maybe it was a case of sour grape, uh, when Dr. Martin Luther King was, was, was uh, uh, receiving accolades for his I Have a Dream speech, the, the sarcastical response that came from Malcolm X was, while he's busy dreaming, his people are dying. Referring to what many people really were happy with uh, in terms of the speech that Dr. Martin Luther King made. So it shows you that Malcolm X was really not impressed because they called, he and his supporters, they called for revolution. And and not negotiation and, and compromise. And I'm sure you are sensing Steve Beagle somewhere here. And then there was, he, he said, we declare our right on this earth to be respected as human beings, to be given the rights of a human being in the society, which we intend to bring into existence by all means necessary. 
This is 1965. This is Malcolm X. By all means necessary. And by all means necessary is departing from strictly non-violent approach, which was used by the, the, the civil rights movement under Dr. Martin Luther King. And then he say, the day of non-violence, non-violent resistance is over. If they have the triple K, which are non-violent, then will also be non-violent. He's basically saying, how can you be non-violent? How can you be peaceful when you have groups like the Triple K, which were overtly violent and nothing was happening to them from, from the side of the state? That's why I said the movement from civil rights movement to black power movement is actually the radicalization of the, the same movement. Is, uh, like you look, at, you look at Stokely Carmichael, that he participated in the civil rights movement activities, but because of despondence, because of disillusionment, he will move from civil rights movement to black power. The same person because he felt the strategies that have been used up to 1964-65 uh, have really not been uh, that much useful. And then this, this is your, your Malcolm X. Very fiery, as you can see from, 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 from this uh, visual uh, representation. Very fiery and a very good orator. Maybe the same way that Dr. Martin Luther King was an orator. But the problem is the audience were not the same. Dr. Martin Luther King, because of his message, his message was obviously going to be received by people who were moderate, people who wanted solution inside, people who did not perceive themselves as, as radicals. But Malcolm X, similarly, he was going to use the, orat the oratory skill, but his audience was going to be those f uh, vibrant young people who really had had enough with the peaceful approaches of this uh, civil rights movement under Dr. Martin Luther King. That's why there was going to be that departure from nonviolent approaches to violent approaches. These are the two leaders, maybe in happier days, or maybe just for the camera, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in 1964 with uh, Malcolm X. And this is about the same time when the, the, the schism was going to happen, the schism and the shift from, from moderate approaches under civil rights movement to the more radical approaches under black power movement. Right, let's, let's look at these leaders now. Uh, this will be Dr. Martin Luther King, who represent black civil rights movement, and then Malcolm X, who will represent the black power movement. Uh, I've said Dr. Martin Luther King, he was dedicated to nonviolence as a strategy. But the direct opposite of that is that Malcolm X, who was from the black power movement, like you have seen in the speech that I've just shown you, he said they will use force if necessary. Force will be used as a form of self-defense, even though sometimes they are wrongly projected as having been overtly uh, 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 violent, as if they, they favored violence above everything else. Whereas, according to them, they will use violence if necessary, meaning there is a condition to that. And then this one, Dr. Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Movement worked with white people. And then uh, when we check Malcolm X and the Black Power Movement, uh, he worked only with black people, especially in the beginning, because in the beginning, he, he even used strong ways to say white people are evil, so white people cannot be trusted. And, and maybe this is what Steve Biko will say later, to say, how can white people be your oppressors and your liberators at the same time? But you'll remember that maybe fast forwarding to the time when Malcolm X was assassinated, even though he started being anti-white, seeing nothing good from white people. After um, his visit to Mecca as, as part of the pilgrimage by the Muslims, he came back having a different idea about white people. He started preaching different messages about white people and saying how, how, how potentially good they can be. And then remember the audience, the people that he have prepared all along, they perceived and they knew white people to be evil. That's why they will assassinate him, because now he has changed. And the same fate befell uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. That is the assassination because both of them died through assassinations. I'm not going to go through all the others, but let's look what, at what was common between them. They both wanted freedom and, and equality, even though they will follow different rules. They were both good orators, even though the message was different. The fact that Malcolm X was violent doesn't make him less of an orator. 
And the fact that Dr. Martin Luther King advocated uh, peace doesn't make him more of an orator just because he was preaching uh, peace. Martin, Malcolm X was able to attract people because of the skill. Dr. Martin Luther King was able to address people because of the skill. Uh, they both believed in nonviolence in a way, especially that if we are to, to, to take this seriously, the fact that much as black power movement raised violence as an option, but they said only if necessary, meaning if not necessary, they will stay with nonviolent approaches. They were very religious in their own ways, Christian, uh, Muslim. They went to jail over a number of times for, for different reasons, of course, especially if you look at Malcolm X. He was a, he, his visits to prison were many, and some of them were because of things that had nothing to do with politics or the struggle. Right now, let's look at the two movements. And I'm sure from the movements you'll see the leaders here. This is the civil rights movement, which was based in the South, as I've shown you on, on the map. And then the Black Power Movement, the operational place will be in the ghettos in the North, where the young people were who were working in the North. And then the Civil Rights Movement, they wanted an inside solution. Solution, they saw themselves as Americans, and whatever changes they wanted to see implemented, they, they were not radical. They, they were not asking for things that were out of the ordinary. They wanted all those things that anyone will really support that they be given. That is why maybe they attracted sympathy from white people because they were not really uh, turning the tables and wanting things that were radical. Whereas the black power movement, they, they even identified with Africa. That's why most of them even visited Africa. That's why even some of them symbolically even changed their names into African names because they wanted to identify with Africa. They came to Africa, took lessons from Africa about how they got their liberation because they saw their struggle as a struggle for liberation. So really, they were separatist if you want to. They didn't, want, they didn't see themselves as part of America. They want a solution that will see them being addressed separately. And then we have already seen that the civil rights movement worked with white people, whereas this one were preaching the separate truth. And then this one, they use peaceful approach. And then the, the black power movement advocated for the use of violence, but there was a condition of said that only if it is necessary. These are some of the leaders. I'm not going to go through the details, but you know that we are basically concentrating on, among the three here, we are concentrating on Malcolm X, who was assassinated in 1965. Right, black power. What is black power? A black power is explained here as a radical and militant movement. It felt that racism was still a threat to black people, especially with regard to, to jobs in the working areas, housing, and in terms of the harassment by the police. And then this movement started around 1966. And then these are the things that the black power movement aspired for. If you like, you can say these were the aims. One, the development of black-owned business in black communities. Like I'm saying, and I'm, I'm intentionally going to repeat saying it, you should be seeing Steve Biko into this. You should be seeing black consciousness movement in it. That uh, there should be development of black-owned business. Black men, you are on your own. I think that resonates with this. Um, they wanted local control of schools in black communities. That's why I said they were seen to be... Uh, separatist in the sense that they wanted to go it their own way. Uh, they wanted the use of black police officers in black communities. They wanted the development of black pride. Remember when I started, I said a black power movement advocated for two revolutions, cultural and political. So you can see here, maybe you can even add economic revolution because here you are addressing the economy. So they wanted to be on their own. And then they preached for separation of blacks, that black people should be regarded as a community on their own and their needs should be addressed uh, as, as a group on, on their own. And, and, and they received a lot of criticism from other African Americans because of this stance, especially those African Americans who were moderate. Um, then the reasons for the rise of black power movement, I'm not going to go through all the reasons because I, I, I will have addressed them indirectly as I was talking about the comparison black, between black power movement and civil rights movement. But the first one that I've noted here is that despite the successes that were registered by the civil rights movement in the South, 
there was still racism and inequality. And the Black Power Movement wanted to address that. The Black Power Movement also wanted to eradicate all forms of segregation and discrimination in the North. When the people in the South were saying hurrah after uh, the, the events of 1964 and 1965, in the North, they felt this was just the beginning because some of the things that were granted to the people of the South, the North took for granted because they already had. That's why they wanted for something more and something for more, more substantial. And then Black Power Movement wanted to accelerate the speed of, of change. That's why I said when they were referring to the strategies of Dr. Martin Luther King, they said the strategies were time consuming. It took long for things to change. That's why they wanted to accelerate the speed. And if you accelerate the speed, it means you have to invest some energy. You have to invest some life into your activities. That is why we are going to see increased um, uh, uh, radicalism under the Black Power Movement. Uh, the Black Power Movement was disillusioned with the ineffective and time-consuming methods. I've already alluded to this. They, did, they detested the inclusion of whites in the struggle of the African Americans. They wanted to instill the feeling of pride and self-worth among the, Afri the, the African Americans, the same way that Steve Biko will be doing with the black South Africans in the 1970s. But here we are talking about the 1960s in America. Um, black power movement was not a racist movement, but it felt that since African Americans were the ones who were victims of segregation and other forms of social injustices, they should take the lead in their struggle. To be pro-black is not to be anti-white. This is what they're basically saying. Because they're saying because black people are the ones, or African Americans are the ones who are having problems, we should be advocating for, or we should be talking on their behalf. I mean, how can we talk? I think this is what they, are, they seem to be saying. How can we talk on behalf of white people when already white people had people to talk on their behalf? Black Power Movement was an, was an organization which was was not an organization which was openly violent. I've already alluded to that. And I said the, the inclination to violence came as a response to what they said was the violence from the triple case and from the police. So they said they, they, only, they will only resort to violence in response to provocation by the triple case and by the police, who have proven in, in, in numerous uh, 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 occasions before that they really were violent. That is the police and the triple K. And then these were the things that the uh, Black Power Movement were, were against. They, they were against the fact that black people were still living in the, in the condition of squalor, under poverty. Black people had schools which were under-resourced. High infant mortality rate that was happening because of lack of facilities or substandard facilities inadequate public transport system which they depended on because they were employed and they were moving from the ghettos to the workplace as well as the the violence of the triple case and other such organizations and then like i've said they 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 were using the approach that black men you are on your own and then because of their activities there will be a lot of violent protest actions in america especially the north of america and this will happen in cities like Detroit and Los Angeles. And they intentionally wanted to do this so that attention will be focused on that. And then there will be riots. And then riots is not a nasty thing. With the civil rights movement, you, you saw marches. But under the, civil, the black power movement, the main thing will be riots and will be a, a not so peaceful uh, processes that they will engage in, in highlighting their problems. These are some of the, the reasons why they they, they, there was a split or there was a shift from civil rights movement to black power movement. Black power women, women seen as a separate organization, I talked about this earlier because of their focus on black people. Uh, they supported violent approach, this is what people said, and they criticized them for that. And for that matter, even African Americans uh, criticized them for the fact that they, they were seen to be violent. Uh, and obviously because they, they from in, in more than one instances, were violent in terms of their activities. There will be many deaths and arrests in, in, in the North. And this will invite a lot of criticism also from, from if you like, the peace-loving African-Americans. But their actions were not in vain because in 1968, the president of America at the time, Lyndon Baines Johnson, was really forced to, 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 
to appoint a commission of inquiry so that it can look at the root cause of the violence, so that the grievances as, 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 as advocated for by the Black Power Movement can be looked into. And then the commission that was appointed by the President of America, President Lyndon Baines John Johnson, were the following one, that uh, the riots were caused by, among others, poor housing, inadequate schools, and poor health uh, facilities. And if you remember, really, these were the reasons that we talked about to say the people that support the Black Power Movement would have talked about this. So it took a commission to... To, to, to go and investigate and advise the president on this. With this being things that were always there, they were not there just because the commission or just when the commission started uh, investigating, but they've always been there. But it took uh, the commission to come up with this. And then the findings continued. Uh, violence was there because there was, the transport was inaccessible, the police were brutal, the feeling of hopelessness among African Americans because of their living conditions. And then the, 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 the commission went on to make a very significant recommendation that unless something is done to address the problems that African Americans were facing, movements like Black Power Movement will always get support. They'll always continue fighting because they felt there was a reason for them to, to fight. And then let's quickly look at the groups that were involved within the Black Power Movement. We can talk about the Black Panther Movement, which immediately uh, got support. Uh, this movement, the Black Panther Movement, um, it, it won the hearts of African Americans because it, 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 it won the support because he, the, Black, the Black Panther Movement, they advocated, not, not really advocated violence, but they said because our people, by our people referring to the African Americans, because they were, they were uh, exposed to violence on a daily basis, the Black Panther Party, uh, which, which grew within the Black Power Movement, promised to, to, provide, uh, uh, to, pro to provide protection to these Africans who were constantly harassed by, by the police. And they will often be seen openly carrying their, their, their guns, which were showing that they, they really were were meaning business. And then let's look at the impact because it is very important that for each structure that we are looking at under Black Power Movement, like now we are looking at the Black Panther Party, we need to say this was the organization, this is what they did, and what was the impact. Like we, we looked at Black Power Movement, we say what was the organization, what was the structure of the organization, what were the activities, what was the impact. The same can be done with the Black Panther Party to say we have seen who they were, we have seen the activities that they did, but now we want to look at the impact. They helped black learners with school work. They opened clinics and gave free medication. And again, if you want to be futuristic, you can also already be thinking about Steve Biko with Black Consciousness Movement in South Africa. The Black Panther Party established programs, self-help programs, the same way that would be happening in South Africa during the 1970s. They collected clothes and gave them to the needy. They organized transport to visit those who were arrested. These were the activities that were done by the Black Panther Party, and this uh, won them the hearts and minds of the, the Africans. And then the impact continued, the impact of the, the Black Panther Party continued. But the most important thing that we can talk about here is the 10-point program which they, they adopted in October 1966. The 10-point program adopted by the Black Panther Party in 1966 was really advocating for the following. The need for freedom, full employment for African Americans, and to what they call robbery by white men of black communities, the fact that black white people were robbing, not literally robbing, but the way they were treated, that was equal to them being robbed. Decent housing, which were fit for human beings, focus on education, exemption from military service, uh, the end to police brutality, freedom of black people, those in prisons, and then those who are still in court to be tried by, by, by black people, and then the need for, for land, bread, housing, education, clothing, and justice. Maybe on this one you can say they borrowed a lot from the Freedom Chart of South Africa in 19, during the 1950s. Because really, this was the program that, 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 that tells us 
what the Black Panther Party was about and, and, and generally what the Black Power Movement was about because the Black Panther Party was just a group within uh, the broad Black Power Movement. And then we can look into the specific contribution of Stokely Carmichael. And Stokely Carmichael was the first one to, lose, to use this slogan, Black Power, in 1966. That's why we said Black Power Movement, as a movement, will have been formed in 1966 with the focus on black people and reminding them they do have power. That's why in, in South Africa there will be this slogan, Amandla Awetu, coming from Black Power which is the South African version of Black Power, Aman Lawetu. And then he, Stokely Carmichael, he, he was not a newcomer to, to resistance. He was first with the civil rights movement, and then he led the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. But he left this organization because it had membership of white students. Remember Steve Biko moving from, from New SAS to Sasso. I think you can see resemblance here. And then he was also arrested uh, over a number of, of, of uh, occasions because of his activities within the civil rights movement. And then he was the one who called for a change of strategy from a peaceful one to a more violent one. He was involved in the activities of the civil rights movement. So he knew what he was saying when he said this was not enough. This that we were doing or this that we have been doing uh, for a long time is not bearing any fruits. There need to be a change of strategy. He later changed his name to Kwame Toure. Kwame from Kwame Ntu, Kwame Nkrumah, Toure from Sikouto, Sikoutoure. Kwame Nkrumah, Ghana, Sikoutoure, Guinea. So this was showing uh, African affiliation, if you like, or African loyalty with this symbolic change of, of name. And then we can also talk about the nation of Islam, which is really where... Uh, Martin Malcolm X will, will find space to operate. That this movement was formed by Elijah Mahomet. But for the better part under the civil rights, under the black power movement, it will be led by Malcolm X. And like I've already said, Malcolm X attracted many people to the nation of Islam because of his uh, oratory, oratory skills. He was a very good orator. And then Malcolm X believed in the following among others. There could be no integration between black and white until there was black unity. There can never be black and white unity until there is black unity. Focus on black people. Separation between black people and white people was necessary so that black people would no longer depend on whites. And then this, 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 he, was, he was a fierce orator, very radical if you like, but his conversion to, to, to Islam and uh, his participation in the pilgrimage to Mecca uh, caused problems for him because immediately after he came back from Mecca, while in Mecca, he would have rubbed shoulders with many people, among them white people who, uh, who, who espoused the religion of Islam. And now suddenly he felt, but I for a long time have felt and, and, and preached that these people are evil, by these people meaning white people. But suddenly with him having shared the same space with white people while at Mecca. He felt oh, these people are not that bad after all. And then he came back from Mecca, this changed person, and then this attracted him a, a lot of, of criticism for him from his own people. That is why he was uh, assassinated. Now, when you talk about the Black Power Movement moving towards conclusion, we need to evaluate it. Was it worth it? Was it with the risks that were taken in terms of them being violent, being arrested, being killed, and opening themselves up to all forms of abuse. Then we are going to evaluate the, the operations of the Black Power Movement under the short term as well as later the long term gains. Let's look at aspects under the short term gains. In the immediate future, what were the things that changed because of Black Power Movement? Violence, and confrontational approach. Suddenly, there was violence everywhere. Rioting resulting in death and arrest. And then this, as, as negative a thing as it may have been, but it attracted, you remember in 1968, the attention of the President of America, President Layden Jones, who um, appointed a commission of inquiry, which will really come with the resolutions that we have, to, we have already spoken about. Uh, a program aimed at, aimed at eradicating poverty and discrimination. The answer 
by President Lyndon Johnson, uh, Baines Johnson, or President Johnson in short, to the recommendation of the commission was to come up with something that really will pacify the situation. And you cannot really pacify the situation if poverty levels remain as high as they were. That's why programs were put in place to eradicate poverty all over America. And then self-help schemes were set up by, for black communities by the black power movement. Remember, there's an MP law program under Steve Biko. I'm, I'm, I'm forming this link intentionally so that you can see that once you do this topic, you also need to do black, power, black consciousness movement in South Africa. So these were the short-term gains. In the short term, these are the things that change. Then in the long term, what changed? Black power movement activists were cultural activists. They advocated for cultural revolution. That is why during their time, people developed pride in themselves. That's why you started having phrases like, like I am black and proud of it. And this has not always been the case in America. And remember, South Africa also under Steve Biko. And then this started to be uh, famous. And it has got implication. If you say, I am black and proud of it, by saying you are black, it means you accept blackness and whatever comes with blackness. Your culture, the, the, the skin color, the, 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 the texture of your hair, and everything else will come with that. African Americans, to the African Americans, their pride grew in terms of their African heritage. They started identifying with their African uh, heritage. The wearing of, of Afro became fashionable among Africans as a cultural statement, not just as a fashion statement, but as a cultural statement. That growing Afro signified that they were Africans and this, this, this distinguished them from everybody else. And then people would stop straightening their hair and using skin bleaches stop making their hair to be fluffy to look like white, stop bleaching their skin to look like white. Why were they doing this? Because they accepted that they were black and they were proud of it. And then other features of black, uh, features of black people which uh, before here were, were deriving a lot of, of uh, uh, mockery. People were mocked on their basis like them having broad noses, them having thick lips. Suddenly this got accepted that this is how we are and this is who we are. And then there was the demand for the creation of uh, black study programs at universities that African history should be introduced in universities so that the African heritage is not lost. The African literature should be focused on. And these are the long-term gains really of the uh, black power movement. Uh, here is just graphical representations. This is what became the symbol of black power remember Steve Biko also later, and then the wearing of barrets, leather jackets, all of them black, uh, became fashionable, and this is how African, Africans identified themselves. The panther animal I've already spoken about. We also spoke about the fact that the Black Panther Party, they, they promised to protect African Americans against brutality by the police and the white supremacists, and this is an example of the how they did the, they how they how they 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 carry themselves in public that is publicly carrying weapons and then the black power salute which is really synonymous with black power movement we talked about self help schemes food on the table we talked about teaching volunteering to teach children at school so that there is solidarity so that there is development so you can maybe say this is an a black power movement activist, and then these are the, 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 the young people. And their focus was on the young people because they said, if you win them young, you have got a future. Whereas in, with the civil rights movement in the South, focus was on old, older people. And then the last, the last thing that I can talk about is this that happened during the Olympics in 1968, where the black power salute really was used during the... the, the the, the parade after the race wa was won by the two Americans. This is where John Carlos and Tommy Smith uh, will display this symbol and make it even more famous than it already was, the black power salute. You can see the black gloves. It is not just coincidence that the color is black because it really wanted to affirm blackness, to say as black as we are, here we are competing with white people, 
but we, we that is the, the one who was number one, we are victorious. So really, this is the long and short of the, 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 the topic on black power movement. I hope you find this information useful and you use it together with what your teachers have taught you. And to you, teachers, my colleagues, if there are aspects that you will not have exposed your learners to from the presentation, please try and integrate them to your teaching so that they are as rounded as, 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 as possible. Because this, as I've said, is a topic which is selected by, by many students. Thank you very much.